Well, it's finally here. We are going to be looking at my personal hurricane season forecast for the 2022 season. Now, this is the typical El Nino influence. We're looking at the La Nina and the El Nino. Um, now, as you can see, again, we're not expecting an El Nino uh, inso status uh, this year, but we are expecting a La Nina to last through the summer and possibly even through the fall. And as you can see, this is a typical El Nino. As you can see, we are going to see uh, if there were to be an El Nino hurricane season, we were going to see uh, more hurricanes due to less vertical wind shear uh, down there and into the Pacific. We're going to see warm and wetter conditions here off the South America coastline. And that's where you typically signify whether it's a La Nina or El Nino in that typical uh, inso status. So, And then here's the Atlantic. We are going to see fewer hurricanes if there were an El Nino in place here uh, due to, again, stronger vertical wind shear and trade winds and a greater atmospheric stability. Now, as we see uh, with the La Nina, we are going to see fewer hurricanes due to strong vertical wind shear, cooler and drier conditions for that typical inso area, and also more hurricanes for the Atlantic due to weaker vertical wind shear and trade winds, again, and less atmospheric stability. Now, let's look at the uh, current NOAA.gov Climate Prediction Center inso alert system status. We look Look at this with every single you know winter forecast fall forecast we do on the channel and again hurricane forecast as you can see you are going to see an inso alert system status is currently at the la nina advisory so la nina is present uh, and as you can see let's read here so we have equatorial uh sea surface temperatures are below average across most of the pacific ocean the tropical pacific atmosphere is consistent with la nina all right so then we get to this part. La Nina is favored to continue through the northern hemisphere summer. Okay. This is a 59% chance uh, during June to August 2022, with even a 50 to 55% chance lasting through the fall. Uh, so again, likely La Nina, once again, so that means we are going to see a little bit of an above average hurricane season. It's not going to be anything like 2020. Or anything like that. I think it's going to be quite similar uh, to the 2021 season. Just because uh, the La Nina, La Nina is going to be fading a lot faster than 2020. Uh, and that may lead to, again, lesser uh, tropical systems and lesser hurricanes. Now, this is from the Colorado State University here. Their kind of prediction of what they're expecting. Uh, now, this is the percentages they're expecting. So, as you can see, we're starting off with ex extremely active. Uh, and there's going to be a 25% chance that we could see ext an extremely active hurricane season. Uh, down below here, we do have a near average percentage, which they are expecting a 25% chance for a near average season. Uh, and then we go to the top right, where we do have an above average season, which is up to 40%. Again, uh, this fits well definitely with my type of prediction here. And as you can see down here, definitely not a below average season is going to be expected. But around near average and maybe above average it will be uh, expected for this hurricane season. And uh, we can even look at the hurricane season forecast from Colorado State University where they are expecting about 19 named storms. Uh, last year was 21 named storms that they were expecting. And the 30-year average was is 14. So that is definitely, again, another above average hurricane season is expected. Now they are expecting nine hurricanes. Uh, and last year they were expecting seven. And then for major hurricanes, again, it's going to be a definitely above average season, possibly here with uh, expected four uh, major hurricanes from the Colorado, Colorado State University. So definitely, again, a pretty accurate uh, prediction here that they are uh, currently expecting. Now here's the hurricane frequency, all right? Uh, now this is not really a forecast that we're looking at right here, but as you can see, uh, the season does begin June 1st uh, and does run through November 30th. As you can see, around May 1st, we start to see uh, the tropical uptick start to happen. It kind of happens a little bit slowly and a little it stalls out kind of uh, in between uh, May 1st and July 1st. 
Uh, but then once you get it to around August 1st, that's when it starts to definitely peak up. And that's where, again, it gets really active here around the end of August into early September. It starts to then downtrend, but still going to be very active here throughout September, October, and even into November. But usually the beginning of November, that's when it really starts to downtrend. And then once headed to headed to December, it's pretty much over by then. So that's uh, the expected. That's uh, the typical activity uh, that ha does happen here uh, across the Atlantic. Or this may even be the Atlantic and the Pacific. I'm not totally sure here. But definitely, again, around the uh, beginning or in the mid to late August and then into about early or mid october that's the peak times for hurricanes now let's look at our, our overall map uh this is my overall map i made this myself and didn't follow any other forecast but i did get ideas so uh, this is my very own forecast this is, i think this might be a third forecast so the third season i'm going to be forecasting here uh and as you can see let's go ahead and start off with our first one which is the giant uh pink bean as you can see this is the development region this is uh typically not really a forecast region but definitely uh, this is your typical development region and i think this is going to definitely be a uh, quite above average in storms as they head westward again uh, they are going to have a lot below average shear in this region and that may allow them to definitely head westward or curve up here uh, which i think there's going to definitely going to be a bigger chance here uh, to the definitely curve up there into the northeastern coastline that's why uh, there is these of uh, these purple areas that's the main areas where we could see landfalls and even those whites i think those white colors here that's where you can see i think uh, in my opinion where you can see the most likely impact regions for this hurricane season we've seen a lot over here uh, last year in uh, louisiana and mississippi alabama uh, and also portions of the panhandle of florida uh, we did see again a uh, hurricane Henri uh, up there in the northeast so uh, definitely some very interesting impact regions that we saw also i think that was 2020 down here in uh, central mexico i think that's also a big region uh, where you can see landfalls likely there so our next up uh, forecast region here is going to be the active region. And this is including portions of the Caribbean and also the Gulf of Mexico. This is where I think it's going to be active this season. Once again, I, th I definitely think uh, these storms are going to be uh, not really heading much to the northwest, but instead just heading due west here into the Caribbean and just kind of uh stall just kind of hanging out there and possibly we have might have some uh, major storms there uh pull up into the gulf of mexico i mean you can't really predict those you just yet here uh where uh, it's going to be months out before those actually happen but again just a prediction i think we are definitely going to have some storms there possibly even a major storm or two go into the caribbean or even the gulf of mexico so our next up forecast region here is the hit or miss region. I uh, typically call this a hit or miss because it's a hit or miss. Uh, and these storms can curve up here or they can just curve up into a fish storm. And that's actually our next region here uh, that we'll be talking about. So this is a hit or miss. So again, storms can go over here into the kind of Bahamas region like Dor uh, Hurricane Dorian and stuff like that. Or they can curve up here into the Carolinas. They can curve up here into the Northeast or they can just curve up here and pretty much impact in nowhere like Hurricane Teddy. Hurricane Teddy was a very strong hurricane and practically just impacted Bermuda and not much there. So again, our next region is the fish storm uh, region, if I can find that there. Uh, as you can see, fish storms. Uh, fish storms there, again, uh, uh, storms that do not impact much. Uh, and if they do impact, it's going to be Bermuda or maybe even these islands out here. So uh, the, any storms that do kind of curve up here and even go to the northeast, uh, if they curve up that much, that's going to be a fish storm for sure there. Now, we have the last region again, uh, possible uh, possible landfalls. Possible landfalls uh, for these hurricanes is going to be especially in the white regions here for this hurricane season. Uh, so I definitely would be aware uh, and in pretty much anywhere along, along the uh, eastern and southeastern coastline of the United States should be always, uh, you know, weather aware around hurricane season because it could happen to anyone anyone can be impacted by hurricanes uh whether you like it or not i mean 
these hurricanes can impact already anywhere but i am expecting again uh, some of those main areas there in uh, along the gulf of mexico coastline and also the east coast could definitely see some action i think this year now i did make this handmade graphic here and as you can see uh i kind of put these arrows i put a bunch of arrows there threw a bunch of arrows on top of these we're also having uh i did forecast below average shear in those blues above average shear areas in the red and also the orange which is terrain turbulence we have a lot of terrain over there in cuba so uh, that's typically we'll where, where some of those hurricanes do go and they do get kind of a spot they kind of get broken up by cuba's mountains those huge mountains there in cuba they do some of those storms do get broken up there so that's kind of terrain turbulence uh, where uh, that kind of threatens storms and hurricanes and stuff like that so let's start off here we do have a below average shear and forecasting for most of this blue blue region i did extend this a lot more northward than i was expecting so uh, i think i would cut it off about right here and then that's going to just be average shear out there since we do have typically a lot of shear heads over here across the northeast and uh, i think there's definitely going to be a definitely average shear across this region so just kind of ignore that there um, but we do have above average shear forecasted especially for these areas here uh, again, typically where first storms do go, they typically break up in that type of region. So as you can see, more above average shear expected down here across uh, around this, uh, just because most of these storms here do head northwest, but if they do head in this region, they're definitely going to be a breaking up because of that shear and also because of how much land is in this kind of pocket. It's kind of the death pocket for hurricanes and uh, tropical storms and stuff like that so again there's those arrows and as you can see most of those tropical waves will be coming out of africa and then heading into this kind of development region then heading across either west or northwest uh and if they even choose northward that's going to be a fish storm of course uh but again all these areas are just potential areas where storms can go and if they do even make it in, in, down here into the caribbean again potential area where that can break those they can break those storms up uh and then you get these arrows here again pointed to different areas of the gulf of mexico just again multiple areas where uh hurricanes and tropical storms can go uh so if you again live anywhere along the coastline of the united states of america so that's southeastern eastern coastline you need to be aware of this hurricane season as we are expecting again an average to above average hurricane season here's our sea surface temperatures map from tropical tidbits and as you can see tropical temperatures are rising fast the sea surface temperatures are definitely rising substantially as we head into the summer months so as you can see the gulf of mexico is likely seeing here 27 to 28 celsius in most of those areas there so again uh, warm waters are starting to rise up here as you can see we are seeing 31 celsius of waters down here off of mexico and central america definitely again very warm waters already there as we head into the summer months we're starting to see some, some of these warm warmer waters head more northward uh again hitting portions of the east coast you will see generally warmer waters as we head into later may into june and then into july that's when that's when these uh temperatures really start to peak there in july and august and uh, area months like that so we're just going to continue to watch this rise as we head it pretty much day by day waiting patiently for the start of hurricane season now here's the sea surface temperature anomalies as you can see look at that line that is a very strong line that does continue here across south america there's that general area where you do uh predict that la nina or el nino as you can see there's a little bit of some warm water some warm anomalies over here but they're not really messing with too much of that la nina there so again that is definitely a very uh, well uh, defined uh la nina that is going to be active here throughout hurricane season if you did enjoy the forecast be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new i will have again a lot of hurricane updates this hurricane season again severe weather updates do continue here uh as we head into again still active severe weather season uh pattern ahead but we can't forget hurricane season as, as it's going to be starting in less than a month about 20 days from now that's the start of hurricane season and may 15th that's actually when the national hurricane center starts their outlooks they stop their outlooks about november 30th 
and then they uh, take a break there throughout the winter months. But then the start of hurricane season, they start those back up. And uh, again, we do get those hurricane forecasts starting up into, I think, early July or maybe even June. We could see some small systems, but then again, peaking in August and September, October even. Uh, that's when we will have most of those hurricane uh, updates so stay tuned for those also subscribe to the channel join the channel you can join the channel or do a super thanks that'll help the channel uh, for future equipment especially for storm chasing so as always stay safe